All right, welcome back to Ultra Config Tutorials. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Nornia Automation Framework. So, when designing a network automation solution, it is critical to keep scalability as a key priority. How can jobs be executed on a large number of devices in parallel? What about inventory management? One solution is Nornia, an automation framework native to the Python programming language. Today, Let's do a deep dive tutorial. We'll start with the basics and then manage a Cisco and Juniper router to show off the power of Nornia. All right, let's get to it. If you love Python, you will love Nornia. Nornia's full integration with Python is one of its greatest highlights. Users will only ever need to write Python code when using the Nornia framework. This isn't the case for most frameworks. Take Ansible, for example. Playbooks are written with a custom DSL, that's a domain-specific language. So is the lack of a DSL a good thing? There's going to be pros and cons to every design decision. While a DSL can simplify readability among other benefits, there are advantages to scrapping a DSL for a generalized programming language. Here's a few. A smaller learning curve. Users will not have to learn any new syntax. As long as they know the programming language, they will rapidly pick up on the development pattern for the DSL-less framework. It also offers a seamless user experience. Users can seamlessly leverage libraries and features of the programming language directly into their code. With a DSL, this is not the case. And finally, easy debugging. Users can easily debug their code using tools built for the programming language. A framework with a DSL would require its own solution for debugging. Okay, so what are some of the other highlights of Nornia? Nornia offers parallel job execution. That is, it can execute jobs against devices in parallel. For small networks with few devices, there usually isn't much of a need for parallel job execution. But as networks grow larger, this is bound to change. Take an example. Imagine a network with 1000 devices and a backup task that takes 10 seconds to execute against a single device. Simple math tells us that these jobs will take almost 3 hours to complete if executed sequentially. With 100 parallel workers, however, these jobs could all be executed in less than 2 minutes. Moving on, inventory management is another great highlight of Nornia. In a large network, how can a user run a task against all Cisco devices, but not Juniper devices? How could a user run a task against all routers, but not switches? Nornia's inventory solution allows users to map devices into groups. Users can then easily execute jobs against subsets of their network. Alright, let's get into some practical examples of how all of this works. First off, we'll open up a terminal and install Nornia using pip, the Python package manager. With that done, Let's discuss inventory management. After Nornia is initialized, inventory is managed inside a Python object. During the initialization, however, we have several options for passing in our inventory data. For a large production network, our recommendation is to manage inventory inside a database. For today though, we'll keep things basic by utilizing the simple inventory plugin. This plugin allows us to pass in our inventory data from YAML files. To get started, let's create an inventory folder at the root of our project. We'll then add three files inside this folder. The hosts.yaml file is where we specify metadata about our devices such as IP addresses, FQDNs, credentials, etc. We can also specify a list of groups that each device belongs to. In our virtual lab, we have one Cisco router and one Juniper router. We'll add our host data in now. Most of the data here is self-explanatory except for the connection options object. This object is necessary on the Cisco device to specify a secret. This is the password that Napalm will use to enter enable mode on the router. Next, we'll create our groups.yaml file. These groups correspond to those referenced in our hosts.yaml file. Finally, we'll create our defaults.yaml file. 
This is where default values are specified. Nornia will use these values unless they are overridden within the hosts or groups file. With our inventory out of the way, let's now create a new file at the root of our project entitled config.yaml. Earlier, we discussed parallel job execution. The num workers object allows us to set an upper bound on the maximum number of concurrent jobs. This is useful for granular control over the hardware resources consumed by Nornia. The remainder of our config file specifies our inventory metadata. We'll now create a new file for our Python program entitled Nornia Tutorial.py. At the head of the file, we'll import our dependencies. Let's now define a method for pretty printing Python dictionaries that will come in handy for printing out Nornia objects. We will now add the code to initialize Nornia. This will read our config file and load our inventory. We can now print our inventory to the screen to ensure it loaded correctly. Executing our program will now display our inventory as a JSON object. You will notice some null values within our inventory. That's not a problem. Nornia will inherit these values from higher levels in the inventory hierarchy. Moving on, let's demonstrate how we can execute a job against our inventory. We'll use the Napalm driver to interact with our devices. Let's retrieve the IP interface configuration from our routers. Executing our Python program now yields the Nornia job logs. These logs are readable for humans, but how can we access our results as Python dictionaries? Users need to know this if they wish to pass a response without using complex regular expressions. So how can we do it? It's actually very easy. Just grab the result key inside the returned object for a host. Check it out. We'll grab the result from the Cisco router and print it to the screen. Running our program should now yield a nicely formatted JSON response. There we go. All looks well. So, earlier we mentioned that Nornia allows us to control which devices we would like to execute our tasks against. We can achieve this using filters. Let's create a filter that will only run our job against Cisco devices. We're able to do this by filtering our inventory with the condition that the platform must equal iOS. Our Nornia job log will now reveal that the task was only run against our Cisco device. And there we go, the filter worked as expected. So that's everything essential we need to know to get started with Nornia. Before I end today's video, I'll also shout out UltraConfig. Nornia is great at managing task execution and network inventory, but how do you automate the generation of network config? UltraConfig is a powerful piece of software for automating the generation of network config. If you work in the network engineering industry, I highly recommend you to check it out. The software includes an API to fully enable end-to-end -end network automation. And the best part about it, the software is free to use with our free forever plan. A link to the software will be in the description. I'll also put a link in the description to a written form of today's tutorial for you to try it yourself. That'll be it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.